Shabbat Shalom. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Asher Kedashanu, B'mitzvotah, B'tzavanu, L'asot, B'dvare, Torah. Blessed are you, Hashem, ruler of the universe, who has sanctified us with commandments and commanded us to study words of Torah. Well, we have a great blessing today because we are doing, we're doing a double portion. I have a double portion. Since this is not leap year, and we do a double portion today. So, let's get started. Exodus 35, verse 1. Moshe assembled the whole community of the people of Israel and said to them, These are the things which Adonai has ordered you to do. In six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is to be a holy day for you, a Shabbat of complete rest in honor of Adonai. Whoever does any work on it is to be put to death. You are not to kindle a fire in any of your homes on Shabbat. Moshe said to the whole community of the people of Yisrael, Here is what Adonai has ordered. Take up a collection for Adonai from among yourselves. Anyone whose heart makes him willing is to bring the offering for Adonai, gold, silver and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, fine linen, goat's hair, tanned ramskins, and fine leather, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, onk stones and stones to be set for the ritual vest and the breastplate. Then, let all the craftsmen among you come and make everything Adonai has ordered. The tabernacle with its tent, covering, fasteners, planks, crossbars, posts, and sockets. The ark with its poles, ark cover, and the curtain to screen it the table with its poles, all its utensils, and the showbread, the menorah for the light with its utensils and lamps, and the oil for the light, the incense altar with its poles, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, the screen for the entranceway at the entrance to the tabernacle, the altar for burnt offerings with its poles and all its utensils. The basin with its base. The tapestries for the courtyard with their posts and sockets. The screen for the gateway of the courtyard. The tent pegs for the tabernacle. The tent pegs for the courtyard with their ropes the garments for officiating, for the serving in the holy place, and the holy garments for Aharon the Kohen, and the garments for his sons, so that they can serve in the office of Kohen. Then the whole community of the people of Israel withdrew from Moshe's presence, and they came. Everyone whose heart stirred, stirred him and everyone whose spirit made him willing and brought Adonai's offering for the work on the tent of meeting, for the service in it and for the holy garments. Both men and women came, as many as had willing hearts. They brought nose rings, ear rings, signet rings, belts, 
all kinds of gold jewelry, everyone bringing an offering of gold to Adonai. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, fine linen, tanned ramskins, or fine leather brought them. Everyone contributing silver or bronze brought his offering for Adonai. And everyone who had acacia wood suitable for any of the work brought it. All the women who were skilled at spinning got to work and brought what they had spun. The blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and the fine linen. Likewise, the women whose heart stirred them to use their skills spun the goat's hair. The leaders brought the ox stones and the stones to be set for the ritual vest and the breastplate, the spices and the oil for the light, for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. Thus, every man and woman of the people of Israel whose heart impelled him to contribute to any of the work Adonai had ordered through Moshe, brought it to Adonai as a voluntary offering. Moshe said to the people of Israel, See, Adonai has singled out Bitzalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Yehuda. He has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge concerning every kind of artisanry. He is a master of design in gold, silver, bronze, cutting precious stones to be set, wood carving, and every other craft. Adonai has also given him and Oholiav, the son of Akishamach, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with the skill needed for every kind of work, whether done by an artisan, a designer, an embroiderer, using blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and, vine li and fine linen, or a weaver, they have the skill for every kind of work and design. Chapter 36. But Zael and Oholiav, along with all the craftsmen whom Adonai has endowed with the wisdom and skill necessary to carry out the work needed for the sanctuary, are to do exactly according to everything Adonai has ordered. Moshe summoned Betzalel, Ohaliav, and every craftsman to whom Adonai had given wisdom, everyone whose heart stirred him to come and take part in the work. They received from Moshe all the offering which the people of Israel had brought for the work of building the sanctuary. But... They still kept bringing voluntary offerings every morning until all the craftsmen doing the work for the sanctuary left the work they were involved with to tell Moshe, the people are bringing far more than is needed to do the work Adonai has ordered done. So Moshe gave an order which was proclaimed throughout the camp. Neither man Neither men nor women are to make any further efforts for the sanctuary offerings. In this way, the people were restrained from making additional contributions. For what they had already was not only sufficient for doing all the work, but too much. With all the skilled men who were carrying out the work, but Zalel made the tabernacle using ten sheets of finely woven linen and of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. He made them with kruvim, 
worked in that had been crafted by a skilled artisan. Each sheet was 42 feet long and six feet wide. All the sheets were the same size. He joined five sheets, one to another, and the other five sheets, he joined one to another. He made loops of blue on the edge of the outermost sheet in the first set and did the same on the edge of the outermost sheet in the second set. He made 50 loops on the one sheet and he made 50 loops on the edge of the sheet in the second set. The loops were opposite one another. He made 50 fasteners of gold and coupled the sheets to each other with the fasteners so that the tabernacle formed a single unit. He made sheets of goat's hair to be used as a tent covering the tabernacle. He made 11 sheets. Each sheet was 45 feet long and six feet wide. All 11 sheets were the same size. He joined five sheets together and six sheets together. He made 50 loops on the edge of the outermost sheet in the first set and 50 loops on the outermost sheet in the second set. He made 50 fasteners of bronze to join the tent together so that it would be a single unit. He made a covering for the tent of tanned ramskins and an outer covering of fine leather. He made the upright planks of acacia wood for the tabernacle. Each plank was 15 feet long and two and a quarter feet wide. There were two projections on each plank and the planks were joined one to another. This is how he made all the planks for the tabernacle. He made the planks for the tabernacle as follows. 20 planks for the south side facing southward. He made 40 silver sockets under the 20 planks. Two sockets under one plank for its two projections. And two sockets under another plank for its two projections. For the second side of the tabernacle to the north, he made 20 planks. And there are 40 silver sockets. Two sockets under one plank and two under another. For the rear part of the tabernacle toward the west, he made six planks. For the corners of the tabernacle in the rear, he made two planks. Double from the bottom all the way to the top, but joined at a single ring. He did the same with both of them at the two corners. Thus, there were eight planks with their silver sockets, 16 sockets, two sockets under each plank. He made crossbars of acacia wood, five for the planks of the one side of the tabernacle, five crossbars for the planks of the other side of the tabernacle, and five crossbars for the planks at the side of the tabernacle at the rear toward the west. He made the middle crossbar so that it extended from one end of the planks to the other halfway up. He overlaid the planks with gold, made gold rings for, for them through which the crossbars could pass and overlaid the crossbars with gold. He made the curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely woven linen. He made them with Kruvim worked in that had been crafted by a skilled artisan. He made for it four posts of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold and gold hooks and cast for them four silver sockets. For the entrance to the tent, he made a screen of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely woven linen in colors, the work of a weaver with its five posts and their hooks. He overlaid their capitals and their attached rings for hangings, hanging with gold, while their five sockets were of bronze. Chapter 37. 
Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood three and three quarters feet long, two and a quarter feet wide, and two and a quarter feet high. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and outside and put a molding of gold for it around the top. He cast four gold rings for it at his four feet, two rings on each side. He made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He put the carrying poles for the ark in the rings on the sides of the ark. He made a cover for the ark of pure gold, three and three quarters feet long and two and a quarter feet wide. He made two cruvim of gold. He made them of hammered work for the two ends of the ark cover. One karuv for one end and one karuv for the other end. He made the kruvim of one piece with the ark cover at the two ends. The kruvim had their wings spread out above so that their wings covered the ark. Their faces were toward each other and toward the ark cover. He made the table of acacia wood, three feet long, 18 inches wide, and 18 inches high. He overlaid it with pure gold and put a molding of gold around the top of it. He made around it a rim, a hand breadth width, and put a molding of gold around the rim. He cast for it four gold rings and attached the rings to the four corners near its four legs. The rings to hold the carrying poles for the table were placed close to the rim. He made the carrying poles for the table of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He made the utensils to be put on the table, its dishes, pans, bowls, and pitchers of pure gold. He made the menorah of pure gold. He made it of hammered work, its base, shaft, cups, rings of outer leaves, and flowers were a single unit. There were six branches extending from its side, three branches of the menorah on one side of it and three on the other. On one branch were three cups shaped like almond blossoms, a ring of outer leaves and petals. Likewise, on the opposite branch, three cups shaped like almond blossoms, a ring of outer leaves and petals. And similarly, for all six branches extending from the menorah. On the central shaft of the menorah were four cups shaped like almond blossoms, each with its ring of outer leaves and petals, where each pair of branches joined the central shaft was a ring of outer leaves of one piece with the pair of branches. Thus, for all six branches, their rings of outer leaves and their branches were of one piece with the shaft. Thus, the whole menorah was one piece of hammered work made of pure gold. He made its seven lamps, its tongs, and its trays of pure gold. The menorah and its utensils were made of 66 pounds of pure gold. He made the altar on which to burn incense of acacia wood, 18 inches square and three feet high. Its horns were a single unit. He overlaid it with pure gold, its top all around its sides and its horns, and he put around it a molding of gold. He made two gold rings for it under its molding at the two corners on both sides to hold the carrying poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of aromatic plant substances as wood an expert perfume maker. Chapter 38. He made the altar for burnt offerings of acacia wood, 
seven and a half feet long and seven and a half feet wide. It was square. And four and a half feet high. He made horns for it on its four corners. The horns were of one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the utensils for the altar, its pots, shovels, basins, meat hooks, and fire pans. All his utensils he made of bronze. He made for the altar a grate of bronze netting under its rim, reaching halfway up the altar. He cast four rings for the four ends of the bronze grate to hold the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He put the carrying poles into the rings on the sides of the altar. He made it of planks and hollow inside. He made the basin of bronze with its base of bronze from the mirrors of the women serving at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He made the courtyard. On the south side facing southward, the tapestries for the courtyard were made of finely woven linen, 150 feet long, supported on 20 posts in 20 bronze sockets. The hooks on the post and the attached rings for hanging were of silver. On the north side, they were 150 feet long, hung on 20 posts in 20 bronze sockets with the hooks on the post and the rings of silver. On the west side were tapestries 75 feet long, hung on 10 posts in 10 sockets with the hooks on the post and the rings of silver. On the east side were tapestries 75 feet long. The tapestries for the one side of the gateway were 22 and a half feet long, hung on three posts in three sockets. Likewise, for the other side, on either side of the gate, were tapestries 22 and a half feet long on three posts in three sockets. All the tapestries for the courtyard all the way around were of finely woven linen. The sockets for the posts were of bronze. The hooks on the posts and their rings were of silver. The capitals of the posts were overlaid with silver, and all the posts of the courtyard were banded with silver. The screen for the gateway to the courtyard was the work of a weaver in colors of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely woven linen. Its length was 30 feet, and its height seven and a half feet all the way long, along, like the tapestry of the courtyard. It had four posts in four bronze sockets with silver hooks, capitals overlaid with silver, and silver fasteners. The tent pegs for the tabernacle and for the courtyard around it were of bronze. Now we begin the second portion, the second parasha. Verse 21. These are the accounts of the tabernacle. The tabernacle of the testimony recorded as Moshe ordered by the Levim under the direction of Itamar, the son of Aharon, the Kohen. Batazalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made everything that Adonai ordered Moshe to make. Assisting him was Oholiav, the son of Akishamach, of the tribe of Dan, who was an engraver, a designer, and a weaver in colors, in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and its fine linen. All the gold used for the work and everything needed for the sanctuary, the gold of the offering, weighed 29 talents, 730 shekels, 1,930 pounds, using the sanctuary shekel. The silver given by the community weighed 100 talents, 1,775 shekels. 
6,650 pounds using the sanctuary shekel. This was a becca per person. That is, half a shekel, one-fifth of an ounce. Using the sanctuary shekel for everyone 20 years old or older, counted in the census, 603,550 men. The hundred talents of silver were used to cast the sockets for the sanctuary and the sockets for the curtain. One hundred sockets made from the hundred talents. One talent, 66 pounds per socket. The 1,775 shekels, 50 pounds, he used to make hooks for the posts to overlay their capitals and to make fasteners for them. The bronze in the offering came to, came to 4,680 pounds. He used it to make the sockets for the entrance to the tent of meeting, the bronze altar, the bronze grate, all the utensils for the altar, the sockets for the courtyard around it, the sockets for the gateway to the courtyard, all the tent pegs for the tabernacle, and all the tent pegs for the courtyard around it. Chapter 39. From the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, they made garments for officiating, for serving in the holy place. And they made the holy garments for Aharon as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He made the ritual vest of gold, of blue, purple, and scarlet threads in order to work it into the blue, purple, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and of finely woven linen. They hammered the gold into thin plates and cut them into threads in order to work it into the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and the fine linen crafted by skilled artisan. They made shoulder pieces for it, joined together. They were joined together at the two ends. The decorated belt on the vest used to fasten it was of the same workmanship and materials, gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely, twi twisted, and finely twined linen as Adonai had ordered Moshe. They worked the onk stones mounted in gold settings, engraving them with the names of the sons of Israel as they would be engraved on a seal. Then he put them on the shoulder pieces of the vest to be stones, calling to mind the sons of Israel as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He made the breastplate. It was crafted by a skilled artisan and made like the work of the ritual vest of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely woven linen. When folded double, the breastplate was square. Doubled, it was a hand span by a hand span. They put, it on, they put on it four rows of stones. The first row was carnelian, a topaz, and an emerald. The second row, a green feldspar, a sapphire, and a diamond. The third row, an orange zircon, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an ox, and a jasper. They were mounted in settings of gold. The stones corresponded to the names of the 12 sons of Israel. They were engraved with their names as a seal would be engraved, each name representing one of the 12 tribes. On the breastplate, they made two pure gold chains, twisted like cords. Also for the breastplate, they made two settings of gold and two gold rings, and they put the two rings at the two ends of the breastplate. They put the two twisted gold chains in the two rings at the ends of the breastplate and attached the other two ends of the twisted chains to the front of the shoulder pieces of the ritual vest. They also made two gold rings and put them on the two ends of the breastplate at its edge, on the side facing in toward the vest. 
And they made two gold rings and attached them low on the front part of the vest shoulder pieces near the join above the vest's decorated belt. Then they bound the breastplate by its rings to the rings of the vest with a blue cord so that it could be on the vest's decorated belt and so that the breastplate would not swing loose from the vest as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He made the robe for the ritual vest. It was woven entirely of blue with its opening in the middle like that of a coat of mail and with a border around the opening so that it wouldn't tear. On the bottom hem, they made pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet and woven linen. And they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates all the way around the hem of the robe. Between the pomegranates, that is, bell, pomegranate, bell, pomegranate, all the way around the hem of the robe for service, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. They made the tunics of finely woven linen for Aharon and his sons, the turban of fine linen, the splendid headgear of fine linen, the linen shorts, and the sash of finely woven linen and purple, and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, the work of a weaver in colors, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. They made the ornament for the holy turban of pure gold, wrote on it the words, set apart for Adonai, like the engraving on a seal, and tied a blue cord on it to fasten it to the front of the turban, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. Thus all the work for the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, was finished, with the people of Israel doing everything exactly as Adonai had ordered Moshe. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moshe, the tent and all its furnishing, clasp, planks, crossbars, posts, and sockets, the covering of tanned ramskins, the covering of fine leather, and the curtain for the screen, the ark for the testimony, its poles in the ark cover, the table, all its utensils, and the showbread, the pure menorah, its lamps, and their arrangement for display, its accessories, and the oil for the light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, the screen for the entrance to the tent, the bronze altar with its bronze grate, poles, and all its utensils, the basin with its base, the tapestries for the courtyard with their posts and sockets, the screen for the entrance to the courtyard with its ropes and tent pegs, all the utensils for the service in the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, the garments for officiating, for serving in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the Kohen and the garments for his sons to serve in the office of Kohen. The people of Yisrael did all the work just as Adonai had ordered Moshe. Moshe saw all the work and there it was. They had done it exactly as Adonai had ordered. They had done it. And Moshe blessed them. Chapter 40. Adonai said to Moshe, on the first day of the first month, you are to set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Put in it the ark for the testimony and conceal the ark with the curtain. Bring in the table and arrange its display. Bring in the menorah and light its lamps. Set the gold altar for incense in front of the ark for the testimony and set up the screen at the entrance to the tabernacle. Place the altar for burnt offerings in front of the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and, get water, and put water in it. Set up the courtyard all the way around and hang up the screen for the entrance 
to the courtyard. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it with all its furnishings. Then it will be holy. Anoint the altar for burnt offerings with all its utensils. Consecrate the altar. Then the altar will be especially holy. Anoint the basin and its base and consecrate it. Then bring Aharon and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Put the holy garments on Aharon, anoint him and consecrate him so that he can serve me in the office of Kohen. Bring his sons, put tunics on them and anoint them as you anointed their father so that they can serve me in the office of Kohen. Their anointing will signify that the office of Kohen is theirs through all their generations. Moshe did this. He acted in accordance with everything Adonai had ordered him to do. On the first day of the first month of the second year, the tabernacle was set up. Moshe erected the tabernacle, put its sockets in place, put up its planks, put in its crossbars and set up its posts. He spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent above it as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He took and put the testimony inside the ark, put the poles on the ark and set the ark cover above on the ark. Then he brought the ark into the tabernacle, set up the curtain as a screen, and concealed the ark for the testimony as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He put the table in the tent of meeting on the side of the tabernacle facing north, outside the curtain. He arranged a row of bread on it before Adonai, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He put the menorah in the tent of meeting across from the table on the side of the tabernacle facing south. Then he lit the lamps before Adonai as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He set the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the curtain and burned on it incense made from aromatic spices as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He set up the screen at the entrance to the tabernacle. The altar for burnt offerings he placed at the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and offered on it the burnt offering and the grain offering, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. He set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing, so that Moshe and Aaron and his sons could wash their hands and feet there, so that they could wash when entering the tent of meeting and when approaching the altar as Adonai had ordered Moshe. Finally, he erected the courtyard around the tabernacle and the altar and set up the screen for the entrance to the courtyard. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting. And the glory of Adonai filled the tabernacle. Moshe was unable to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud remained on it. And the glory of Adonai filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel continued with all their travels. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not travel onward until the day when it was taken up. For the cloud of Adonai was above the tabernacle during the day, and fire was in the cloud at night, so that all the house of Israel could see it throughout all their travels. Hazak, hazak, venitz kazak. Be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened. 
And thus ends the book of Shemot, Exodus. A double portion. How much time do we have? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> ah, and I had an extra point to make because we've got a double portion, right? So, uh, but one of the things I want, one of the most important points to make is this. We've read all this before earlier. You remember? There's some difference here, though. And the difference is very, very important because God does not say anything without purpose and without strong, holy intention. When we read this before, the directions... It was before the sin of the golden calf. And God was ready to wipe the entire nation out at that point. He was ready to wipe them out because they had broken the covenant. And broken a covenant nearly before it was even made. I mean, they had broken a covenant. Moshe is coming down with the tablets. And the covenant was broken. So he himself cast the tablets down and shattered them, which symbolized the broken covenant. Now what? Now what? The covenant is broken. And Moshe interceded. And God spared the nation. And he made a new covenant. He made a new covenant. He renewed the covenant. So, the New Testament, <laughs> the New Covenant, which Christians claim. This was a lot earlier. This New Covenant is a lot earlier. Because this is a New Covenant. Everything is repeated again. Because this is now a New Covenant. And now... There are some changes. There are some differences. But now they have actually accomplished it. What we see occurring here and what we should rejoice in is that the nation repented. The nation repented. And they did everything Exactly as God had said. Exactly as Adonai had ordered Moshe. And they had done it. They had done it. It was great rejoicing. In the previous covenant, those that, whose will impelled them were to give the instructions that were given. And it even says commanded. And this is really unique here because there's a contrast here now because we see that there are those who had willing hearts and hearts of wisdom. Willing hearts and hearts of wisdom were, he, get the sense of this. Meditate on this with me. God commanded them to make offerings, but he said those who are willing were to give 
voluntarily. Yes, he commanded the offerings, but they were to be voluntary. So it was with a willing heart. We should rejoice at that. But that's a mark of the repentance. But that's not all. Just as uh, Bezalel and Oholiav had been granted wisdom, others had hearts of wisdom, which they were uh, also gifted by God's Spirit to train them, to teach them all these skills that were needed to do the work. Those that gave with a willing heart gave the raw material to, materials to construct the temple, and they gave willingly. But those who gave with a heart of wisdom gave the skills and the time and the artist, artistry the artisan work was done by them, and that was their contribution. That was their offering, and it, too, was voluntary. So we have, we have willing hearts, and we have wise hearts, hearts of wisdom. That's important. Um, And that may be all we have time for today because of reading, of course, the double portion here. But um, there was a note that, uh, uh, that Tony referred to uh, in, on page, uh, well, 114. He, he actually shows this contrast. So you see this whole part. He's focusing. He actually shows how to outline the uh, parasha, and he, he gives a nice diagram here, which is really good, uh, certainly, to reflect upon. And uh, there is also a part uh, in the... Uh, concerning the Messiah, um, page... Uh, page 117, uh, and, and he talks here, uh, and this follows this, this idea that they have indeed learned their lesson. They have indeed repented, and it's a, it's a wonderful thing that God has renewed the covenant with them to the extent that he goes, because the other one was broken, and so even though we go through this entire process, here it is again, but it's not the same it's not the same that's the point we look we look. this is indeed a new covenant that God has made with his people he's accepted their repentance he's accepted that and so the relationship is now restored and we see uh, a connection here between uh, uh, this Torah portion these two double portion plus King Solomon in the Haftarah, and also Yeshua. Because Bethsael, in the shadow of God Almighty, built the first tabernacle, the Mishkan. Solomon built with wisdom as well the temple. And then there is the connection there with the Messiah who builds a temple in the hearts. The hearts. In the wise and willing hearts, he builds a temple of living stones. We're done. <laughs> okay. Shabbat shalom. You didn't get to get, get anybody's to uh, ask questions. Right?
Yeah, you'll have to come and you'll have to come to me privately then, or talk amongst yourself, which is also a good thing to do.